Hello everyone and welcome back to my Hard Time series in Curl Space Program 0.25. In this episode, I begin with an awareness that maybe it's not really hard times anymore. Uh, we, we've got quite a lot of funds to use actually, quite a lot of science as well. Uh, we've got a nice little space system, uh, the, the DRK, the Derek, if you will, the space plane. And uh, we are going to be rescuing Guzbass Kerman from orbit. And so that'll be one of our purposes this episode. Probably not going to get to the Jewel mission, though we clearly have quite a lot going there. Instead, since we're going to be doing the rescue mission first, uh, I see here that we've got uh, science data from space around Kerbin. I think we can do that at the same time. Uh, I think, in fact, we could probably get science data from space around the moon as well. Uh, structural pylon in flight over Kerbin. It could be a little bit dangerous. Yeah, I won't do this right now. And well, it has a lot of science, but we really, we're really not uh, pressed for that. So I don't like the payout ratio there. So yep, uh, let's focus on these first. And we're going to be using the space plane. So yeah, let's uh, go to the space plane hangar and see what I can do to put together a mission that can not only get Gus Bass Kerman back, but also grab science data from space around Kerbin and the moon. Okay, so here we are with the DRK-1. So the vehicle name is Derek, which is a deployment and retrieval of cargo, or if you like, Kerbals. Uh, cargo uh, spelled with a K, of course. And uh, the mission name is DRK-1, DRK-2, etc. The test mission was DRK-0 because, of course, there was no deployment or retrieval of cargo. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, deployment and retrieval of cargo seems like an odd name, but when you think about it, the technical designation for the space shuttle is STS, Space Transportation System. And then, of course, the new thing that uh, NASA is uh, building is the SLS, the Space Launch System. And I figure that the Kerbals will at least know that they're aiming for space and what they're doing is a system. So, uh, so yeah, I think it's fair enough to uh, just name, a, name it with its uh, function because that seems to be the thing that is done anyway. All right, I've added RCS ports. This is my very first time using these Place Anywhere linear RCS ports. I know it's uh, amazing, but I always use these thruster blocks. And the hope was that it would make things a little bit less obtrusive if I didn't use the thruster blocks. Um, not too sure I succeeded. Not too sure I put them in very good places at all. Tried my best. I mean, uh, of course, the goal is to avoid messing with the beautiful lines of this particular vehicle. So you see here, two on the tail here, and the thruster blocks here. I begrudgingly put block there and in front also you can see a pair here uh, begrudgingly because of course uh, it's not really supposed to have anything on the bottom because you know re-entry heat and all that but anyway uh, so a little bit of a flaw there but we don't have the peculiar kind of uh, RCS extension that the spatial has on its tail and uh, which allows it to mount uh, downward facing ones as well but, uh, yep. Anyway, so that's the only real change to the vehicle. The probe is as you see it here. Uh, it is a 3-ton probe. It's actually 2.85 or so. Uh, but we've got, we're going to call it 3 tons for test purposes to because we don't even know how much the DRK, the Derek, can actually take up into orbit. So uh, it was empty payload bay on the first try. It's mounted on uh, one of the decouplers here because I didn't want to put a decoupler here and have it flung back. That would be bad. Uh, we don't have this uh, the, um, the other one so we only have these stack decouplers. We don't have the separators. So the separators would be safer. But these have a decoupler force so I don't want to have that happen. All right. Uh, otherwise, it's got. Uh, it's meant to bring things back. Uh, we don't have very many science experiments actually. We only have the thermometer and barometer. And since we're doing experiments in space, um, probably not a good idea to have the barometer. Uh, 
uh, mounting the science junior on this once it was in because uh, I started off the core part is the fuel tank and trying to put the science junior on did not work out very well so I just left it off um, so it's got its antenna but it's really supposed to bring everything back it needs to be able to transfer to the moon right because we need to do space uh, science around the moon and so that's why we've got uh, this little setup uh, should be an okay probe I hope it'll be all right in here we'll see so I'm gonna close Chicago Bay now ooh well that's a bit unfortunate tell you what maybe I should mount it on a well now it's gonna be a little bit tricky I guess we have to use the stack decoupler I mean we don't want it looking like that do we okay well the probe is there I uh, mounted it back let's see the center of mass and center of lift okay that's fine all right let's strut it down it will make me feel a little bit better since it's sort of oh do the struts not connect very well to these the walls of the cargo bay no uh, it looks fine Okay. So, hopefully that'll work out. Uh, hopefully it's decoupling will not smash it into the top here before I can gain control over it. Let's see if the closing of the cargo bay doors has any clipping now. Okay, it closes fine. All right. So now, uh, choice of crew. I think I'm going to have Bob do this one. Okay, looks like... Uh, whoa, whoa, there's uh, one little problem here. That. Okay, save and let's go rescue a Kerbal. Okay, here we go with Bob Kerman carrying much heavier load. Let's see if this thing can make it to orbit even. Uh, where is our Kerbal? Gus Bass Kerman. It will we'll just go for it. Uh, I don't know if this is the best time to... Uh, yeah, let, let's... We'll just have him weigh in orbit if necessary. If it doesn't turn out alright. Okay. Throttle up. SAS is on. Mode should be correct. Bob looks ready to go. And I'm not going to take it from inside the cockpit. I will eventually, but uh, with uh, the heavier load, I'm worried about my rotation speed and ability to take off properly. Uh, remember, we have less thrust than I initially designed this to have. So let's see what happens. Okay, rotate. Alright, lift off confirmed. Gear up. Okay, the DRK-1 mission is underway. Okay, well, uh, trying to find the optimal climb here, it's a little bit tough. It definitely feels a lot heavier than it was before. We've added three tons to it, and if you see, total mass of 47 tons right now, but that's before we I've burned the fuel that will get us into orbit. Uh, 
uh, seems to be on automatic switching, but I think I'll, I'll probably end up switching it before it switches itself, so should be fine. Okay, I think my patience is wearing thin. And we don't seem to be picking up much speed even as we sort of hover around level here. Try for a little bit higher and then switch over to to rocket mode on the outer engines. We've got too much oxidizer, I think. Okay. Yep, going to rocket mode. So that's rocket mode on the outer engines. Okay, we're losing thrust in this engine, so I'm going to go to rocket mode there too. Guys, close the air intakes now. Okay, looking good so far for Bob Kerman on his way up. But will it be enough? Don't know just yet. Okay, outer engines out, shut down. We don't actually have much fuel left. Hmm. It may in fact be wise to transfer some fuel. I've got a few seconds to do some calculations on how much fuel this little guy actually needs. It has 4,000 delta V right now. <laughs> well, that's a lot. And so uh, let's say we uh, dump uh, one ton worth of fuel out into the into the derrick. Oh, still have enough. Okay. Um, I need to be able to dump one ton of fuel evenly. Okay. So now we do have to make orbit before letting go of the probe. We're totally in the wrong position to meet up with our Kerbal, but that's fine. We need to launch our our science mission first. Okay, that's orbit. Not necessarily the orbit we want in order to meet up with our Kerbal, but it's good enough for now. Actually, pretty circular. 82 by 84. Okay. Now, the question is, when I decouple this, will it smack everything else? Uh, okay, throttle this down. We're going to find out. We're going to have SAS on. Okay. Boop. Okay, good, good, good. All right. That's fine. That's a good release. Let me switch to it. All right, uh, you fella, you should point this way, right. Get clear. I didn't put any lights on. It's got enough of a electric charge issue as it is. Right. 
now for this probe, uh, it needs to do some science around the around Kerbin, right? So we've got transmit or recover scientific data from around Kerbin. Okay. Let's see. First of all, have we done mystery Google? I'm sure we have. But oh, well, that's a surprise. Okay, uh, we will keep that data for recovery. This is a case where free return trajectory would actually be not so bad. It says from space around the moon, not from orbit. Okay, that's uh, excellent free return trajectory. We've got a moon periapsis of 50 kilometers, a Kerbin periapsis of 48. That will work. I mean, it, it, actually, we'll probably have to decelerate just a tad on the Kerbin side, but uh, that's pretty good. Now, since uh, since our mission to rescue the Kerbal is going to have to go around a few times before reaching him, anyway, I'm going to just follow this little probe and do its burn first. Better sure the DRK-1 is, uh, well, the Derek, the mission DRK-1 isn't going to have any electric charge problems. You see it's starting to got to turn off its lights. And we can close, actually... First close the cargo bay, then turn off the lights. Okay. With the cargo bay open, its uh, solar panels are not exposed to sunlight, so it wouldn't be able to recharge otherwise. But now it's okay. All right, back to the mission. Okay, looks like an excellent burn. Good timing and everything. Uh, of course, I set the throttle to make sure that we have a good timing on it so that we don't uh, go too far away from our plan, which happened to be a pretty good uh, trajectory. We don't have too much fine tuning available to us. Okay, a little bit higher than expected on the moon side. Let's see what our carbon periapsis is. We don't need to get too low above the moon, so we'll just tune our Kerbin periapsis for a straight up re-entry. That should do it. So what we have is a moon periapsis of 85 kilometers and a Kerbin periapsis of 32. I don't even think we need to use the rest of the fuel, honestly. Okay, the probe is underway. Looks like our orbit is pretty close to the target's orbit. Maybe you want to burn out a little bit more. Let's see how much we catch up on a single orbit. But I think we might want to uh, go to a higher orbit in order to... Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's we're, we're basically on opposite sides. It'll be easier to go to a higher orbit. But then again, uh, well, we can just... Use, let's try and use some monopropellant to do that. Okay. Not raising it up as much as I would have hoped, actually. Yeah, this is actually counterproductive. Okay. I'll just I'll just wait. It's going to be a while, folks, but uh, probably safer to wait. While conducting another mission, I don't think it's going to be easy for the Derek to meet up with a Kerbal that isn't in in equatorial orbit or in any sort of high orbit. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind. If uh, the Kerbal is in a tough orbit, then we're going to have to eschew the possibility of a separate mission being launched at the same time. Okay, I'm actually going to switch to the moon mission. Okay, we are now in a moon encounter. Kerbin periapsis is still as planned. Just need to pick up some science of any kind. Ah, I see the the communitron was blocking the thermometer. Ah, temperature scan can't be done right now. How about observing mystery goo? Oh, it can be recovered. Wow, I'm surprised. We haven't done much science like this, I guess. We went straight for landings. Oh well. Okay, so. Well, guys around there are still, they're going to take a long time. 
Getting closer and closer. I think we'll be able to bring this mission down first, though. Yeah, this mission is going to get real close to Gus Mas Actually, this mission is going to be closer to Gus Mas Kerman than, than the DRK-1 at this point. Alright, we are going to re-enter. Is that a lake down there? I think so. Or is it a... It's one of the... Whatchamacallit? Easter eggs. Can't really tell from here. It's oddly triangular shaped for a... For a lake. But there's another lake. So maybe it is one. Uh, terrain could be better. We'll find out. You notice I deliberately mounted the signs high. It's it's clipping a little bit. That's unintentional, and uh, but it just happened that way. While I was trying to get stuff into the cargo bay. Okay, it's down. Uh, okay, recover. Okie dokie. So uh, we fulfilled those two contracts, and we got. Uh, a minor amount of science, 31 science, and uh, unfortunately we were on practically the opposite side of the planet from the KSC, so we only got 43% of the funds back from the probe part, but uh, we expect to get 100% minus fuel of the of the derrick, so that's good. Um, while we're here, let's uh, take a look at the tech tree. I feel like we need some more science, because we've got that nifty little probe now. Where is the science hiding? Is that science? Well, that's not going to lead us to anything new. I suppose this this will unlock more science parts. Let's hope. Okay, yeah, that's the seismometer. Let's go straight for it. I forget what, what did I? I probably had some plan in mind prior to this. But we've already got the rapiers, so... Yep, yeah, I think we can uh, go for science. Alright, so we need uh, about 126 science to unlock the gravioli. And then we can do those dual missions that we saw. Could also use the, uh, the RTG. Okay, anyway, uh, back to rescuing the Kerbal. Okay, here we are with Bob again, and once again he's facing the wrong way, but electric charge is not a big deal right now. Got the lights turned off and everything, just in case. Okay, a little bit closer to our target Kerbal. Let's just wait. Okay. We should be able to make a rendezvous on this orbit. Not too much difference from the target in terms... Of what the hell just happened? Wing straight collide into launch pad. No, that's definitely not what happened. What the heck just happened? Okay, I hope it wasn't anything critical. I don't see any problems. Maybe we should uh, get Gus Bass Kerman to take a look around at the ship before coming back in. Where is he anyway? There he is. Whoa. Happened again. Happened again. Something happened. What the heck? That's so scary. Structural wing type A collided into launch pad. Okay, does that mean we're missing wing parts? Yes, it does. We're missing wing parts. 
We're losing parts of our craft. What the heck? We're not we're not anywhere near a launch pad, folks. Um here. Uh I'm going to I'm going to quit out of the save and come back in uh before we lose any more of our craft. Okay, so I've completely restarted KSP in the hope that things will stop exploding on the launch pad when they were never on the launch pad. Doesn't have any indication here, but we're still missing those parts. This is a bit worrisome. Instead of uh, turning with torque, I'm going to start uh, using pure mod propellant. Why we're drifting away from Gus Bass Kerman after I matched um, speeds with him, I have no idea. I mean, why are difference to target is so different I have no idea um, here let's right now try to do this as gingerly as possible so that I mean my my suspicion is that some of the wing pieces were colliding with each other and that's why that's why we had those explosions though there's no good reason for that either um, especially since it says that they collided with the launch pad, which is wrong. But, you know, tough to say. Oh, we are over the KSC right now. So that's good, it's going to be in daylight once we finally manage to land. Okay, I think I'm gonna take control of Gus Bass. All right. Now you crazy Kerbal, be careful. Chase view. Orient. Okay, now rescued Kerbals go to, into the crew tank. They don't go into the cockpit, obviously. They need to. Uh, sort of uh, get situated you know they've had a traumatic experience and all of that so we don't want them having to deal with operations even though there's a spare seat handy they probably probably just wants to relax a bit Holy mackerel, these Kerbals are huge compared to the cockpit stuff. So this is the crew hatch. Let's see. Let me get you to board there. Okay. Uh, oh, he's in there. Okay. So no problems. Could transfer him to the cockpit if you want to, but uh, unfortunately, I guess in this crew tank, uh, the portrait doesn't show up. That's all right. I think we know what he looks like. All right, so it's time to try and make a landing. We have a lot less fuel. We have a lot less mod propellant. We have a lot less of everything, and uh, we have a lot less actual parts. So let's see how this works out. Okay, last time I plotted this sort of uh, maneuver to descend and it turned out that I used a 25 kilometer over this location and and I managed to make it pretty good into the KSC gliding most of the way but we are in a lower orbit this time that time we were in a 120 100 to 120 kilometer orbit I think it was and so this is going to be a little bit different Anyway, I'm going to do the burn, and I, I guess I'll aim for maybe 30 kilometers instead of 25 and see what happens. Well, actually, it'd be better to... Yeah, it'd be better to undershoot. So let's say 27. So where are we? 36. Though we don't have that much fuel. It's possible that this time we might have to use the parachutes to ditch if it turns out that we run out of fuel too quickly. Okay, uh, 28. No, let's go for 27, really. There we go. Uh, I think. 
Okay. I am not sure how well the parachute abort system will work out, whether it can really save this entire vehicle or not. There are no parachutes on the cockpit itself. I guess by having one Kerbal in the crew tank and one in the cockpit, we're sort of making sure that our eggs aren't all in one basket. Probably wise. Actually, this approach doesn't look too bad so far. Well, best pitch is only be able to hold us about 15 degrees now. It was 20 degrees just a second ago. Could use my propellant to help it out, but probably don't need to do that. Okay, I'm uh, activating the air intakes. Switching engine mode back to jet. Air breathing. Can't go for too high an angle of attack, otherwise that will cause trouble. And if I want a higher angle of attack, well, if I want to tighten up the prograde vector with respect to my current angle, I will need more thrust. So I'm trying to balance that out right now. More thrust I get, the closer the angle will be. But then I also have to watch my fuel. We're quite a ways away from target. Okay, we could probably glide in for most of the way at this point, but I'll keep the engines running just in case. Mainly I was nervous about the mountains, of course. I think I've got the runway in sight. I'm not sure. Actually, the icon for the landing beacon is somewhat getting in the way. I think so. Okay, Bob Kerman looks confused actually. Well, maybe maybe that's his game face. I don't know. He certainly looks like he's perusing the instruments, making sure he knows what's going on. Well, let's hope he's got this going right. I'm gonna throttle up a bit just to make sure we can uh, we can head back up quickly, if necessary. Looking good so far though. Very, very good approach. Okay. Okay, brakes, 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 brakes. And there you have it. First successful mission use of the Derek. The DRK-1 mission is, oh well, let's, uh, let's put parking brakes on, uh, is a success. We have uh, Gus Bass Kerman added to our roster. Bob Kerman did his job successfully. A few margins were a little bit tight. Uh, so I'd say that the cargo capability of this is about three tons. And so not, not a huge cargo capability, but the probe that we uh, did carry with us 
uh, had uh, more than 2,000 delta V to it, so it can uh, be sent to fairly distant locations. And uh, of course we transferred some fuel back. I really need to dump about 200 oxidizer out of this uh, system and that will make things a lot more efficient. Okay, well, let's recover vessel. Okay, uh, no additional science. Uh, parts recovered at 100% of value, 91,770 funds. Of course, we lost a wing piece, at least one wing piece, for uh, for some strange reason. I think it was two. And uh, now we've got uh, two Kerbals available for new missions. Um, yeah, that's all good. And uh, next time, I'm going to do something other than this space plane. I think we should uh, turn to other things. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be the dual mission or something else. I'll have to, well, whatever I feel like doing, I guess. So uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.